Hello everybody, welcome back to UNS Kick Tips. Thank you so much for joining me again. As we all know that customers' demands, time to time, make us create new concepts in our cake decorating business. For example, somebody asked us to do something that we don't do all the time. It is not in our list and uh, they want a such and such thing. I don't know exactly what is this done now, but something new. So we accept this uh, request and then we start doing it. And suddenly we realize that, wow, such a good idea. We can just add this one in our list and offer to other people. Then after that, we realize that our offering list is bigger and bigger, getting longer and longer. So many years ago, we opened our first shop and our aim was catering large cakes with top dollars. Shortly after, we realized that we're missing quite a large bit of market. And then uh, customers often walking out when they hear specially the price and then saying that uh, I'll get back to you and I'll check with my mom, with my husband or whatsoever. And then this just lost off uh, quite a bit of business. Then I designed several simple concepts to cater people who has low budget. And then uh, that works, that really works. Then I have done a few videos in the past with those uh, using those concepts and I like to continue doing so with forthcoming videos. So let's have another uh, video today uh, looking at this uh, some other concept like that and I call that pop-up cakes. I use the word concept deliberately instead of design because design is something spontaneous, something individual. You can create one after another without worry about what kind of category goes this design, you know, into it. So, but the concept is you can put a sort of like a similar designs into one area, into one concept that you can make it as a systematic uh, choice. Like you can, uh, you can, when you're offering like, would you like to have this kind of cake? Then people comes out variations that you can put uh, those designs into that concept. So edible images on sugar for cakes are not new. We have seen that quite long years, but chocolate transfers, as you see on this table, uh, is more known to us recently. Uh, basically we print an image on a transfer sheet. Transfer sheet means acetate with a special coating on it. We can print from the special printer with a special ink. We can have this image on that transfer. So after that, what we do, we just melt the chocolate, spread the chocolate on top. And then when the chocolate gets set, we remove the acetate sheet, then chocolate comes out with the print. So the printed chocolate goes flat on the cake and it's all done. We will do the same thing today but not flat on the cake. There will be individual images like this, uh, multiple images will be in their original shape, vertically standing instead of lying down. And now we create that kind of scenery instead of just putting one page on the cake flat. Okay, it sounds so easy, but here are the rules that I would like to recommend you to follow. First of all, you must have a team, a suitable team to apply this concept. As you see today, I'm using Frozen as a design, uh, but doesn't mean that this video teach you about how to make only the frozen cake. So learn the principles and you can take any team and apply to that kind of principles. All right. So first of all, uh, when we're doing our cake, you must have also matching surface. So as you see over here, I've done my cake ready already, two tier, 20 centimeters and 10 centimeter height, and then 15 centimeter and 75, seven and a half centimeters height. So frozen, as you know that there's a snows involved and then there's a mountain involved. That's why I didn't make it flat cake. It's a bit high cake. And then all those spiky bits, I just did it very, very simply. And that's it. That's ready to work with. So if I would do this as a kind of golf team cake, I would of course do the green and then the trees and then some stones and grass, etc. I will prepare the cake surface accordingly. What will happen? Probably just a green, maybe different tones, maybe some sort of a bankers with the with the like a, some sandy parts on it. That's it. Maybe maybe it will be a flat cake, not sort of like a high cake. All right. So you can think about any other any other sort of like a let's say underwater scenery or like a, anything else you can think of. You can apply exactly the same principles. So surface of the cake has to prepared earlier than you do all those things. All right. Then we print the images. So you have two choices. Either you go and get yourself 
a printer with a special cartridge and then also empty transfer sheets. You can work with the Photoshop. You must have a definitely a Photoshop knowledge and to do that. So if you don't have the setup, I'm sure there is some sort of like a cake decorating supplies around available that you can go for it. And also today is an internet network, so you can order online. So you can just probably like finding exactly the, what you're looking for or what you do, you choose your pictures, design your cake and then send them the pictures, they print and send it to you by the post. Where do you do that? I have no idea. You just search in the internet. All right. So when you're doing the images, you must make sure on some images you have to reverse it because when we're putting, let's say, this is the actual picture. See that the snow on the right, castle on the left. But when we can't put the chocolate over here, we have to put the chocolate on the printed side. So when we put the chocolate over here, when we remove the cake, we remove the chocolate sheet, it will be correct uh, condition. Especially when we're doing like writings, logos, etc. That is most important thing that you have to reverse the, reverse the image before you print out. All right. So proportions is very important. That means before you taking all those images and organizing on the, on the sheet, on a piece of paper, you must choose the size. How to do that? Okay, let me show you very, very quickly. All right, this is how I do. So I know that I'm going to make this cake this size, 20 centimeter wide and 100 centimeter height, and then 15 centimeter uh, wide and 175 millimeter height. So that is approximately the cake size, about, let's say, starting from here. That's the cake. All right, that's the second cake. All right, and I like to have the, the castle. I know that it's something like about this size. I want to have my, the first lady, Elsa, has to be here, and then the second person here behind, and then I want to have that, uh, what do you call this, uh, reindeer is around here. All right, about this size, this size, and then this guy, I think, What's his name? I know I forgot. So that is the guy here. And uh, well, and then a lot of a lot of like uh, trees around. Okay, we miss it. Oh, we missed the most important figure. That is the uh, the snow one. It has to be here, here or here. Doesn't matter where it is. I like to put maybe here. I'm not so sure. I will decide later on. But I know the size is this, like that. So that very, very rough picture, like a scribble, shows me exactly that Elsa should be this height and then the other person has to be this height. The castle may be a little bit longer here. And then it gives me, while I'm doing this exercise, I make my decisions how big has to be the little figurines or individual figurines. You can always, before you print, you can increase the size or reduce the size, etc. So that's how I did and I get up with this, the sizes. Next thing to do. After the proportion, so you choose one item as a background. So obviously in this team, the castle is the background. So if you go for like a, a golf team or something, I would probably do some large trees or something like maybe far away mountains or something like I will choose. But you need to have a sort of background to create that depth. So that like a, something far away, something in front of you. All right? And then you have to choose, of course, the main character. Over here, you know who is it. If I do the golfer cake, the golfer man will be the, or, or lady will be the main figure. All right. So that should be like emphasized in size, a little bit more close to you. And then everybody else, like maybe more far away. Because if you have a golfer with friends, I will make the friends a bit smaller and a little bit more far away. Not that everybody, everybody sort of like on the same height. The person that who is important has to be outstanding. All right. So other characters, as I said, you have to choose and then get them also accordingly. Then we will have filler prints. So as you see over here, I have my trees. So when everything is done nicely, I will have some other objects to put it in, pocketing in between, in different sort of depth. It will create sort of really more realistic scenery. All right. And then, of course, most important at the end, when we prepare all those things, how to compose that look, that scenery. I will explain you while I'm doing it. And then 
when everything of the finish, we can also add some additional objects. For example, in this case, I may just put little stones with a bit of like a, maybe like ice blocks with a bit of like snow on top. And then if you have a golfer cake, as I always mentioned that the second, second sort of idea, uh, you may just put like a little bushes and then sort of like little, maybe, uh, I don't know, just maybe grass pieces or something, a little, little stone. So maybe it's not exist on the golf field, but maybe something else. I will find out. Just think about it. You will find out some fillers that you may use it to make it things a bit more complicated, a bit more realistic. All right. So that is, I'm talking about like additional objects. So let's start acting to finish this cake. Let me also tell you what I have on the table. I have my cones ready or the cellophane sheets I use for cones and I have my cake pop sticks. Some of the figures uh, will need this one because there will be no touching point. I have to poke this inside the cake. That's why I will use cake pop sticks uh, that with an extension a little bit to go in the cake. And then for the background, I will use those tall ones around here, that's a wood, wooden uh, skewers. I have my scissors to cut the end bit of the cones. I have my little roller, maybe I need it for the snow pieces on the rocks. And then I have my some off cuts from the remaining from the cake, blue, light blue and the white. And then a little bit of royal icing, I may be just using for covering some corners. A wet uh, towel, I have my little um, uh, craft knife. That is not really necessary, but I have it always on the table, water spray, my sticky tape to secure the end bits of the cones, and then my prints and my white compound chocolate. All right, let's go ahead and do this one first. Transfer sheet, as I said, the shiny part on the back, and then the printed part on the top. I'm gonna pipe only the areas where I want it on the cake. So I'm not worried about all the background. I will only make the, the castle for me available to, to use it. So I just use some white chocolate here. So basically the this part goes on the cake. So that means that I must have a, like a 90 degrees flat surface here. So that will be the end of it. Let's check one more time. That's correct. All right, that's good. So these are my sticks. So what I like to do, I'm not gonna put it on, put more chocolate on top. So what I like to do, maybe the sharp part underneath is busy to go. Um, put it here, like this, and then move left and right to get the chocolate on top of it. See, look, what I do, I just sink in the chocolate and just make noise some movement, left and right, it will be hidden inside the chocolate, all right? So one here, double check, everything's good. So that goes to the fridge. So next thing I like to do, the, the reindeer. Uh, that guy is sitting in front of the cake and then sitting on the base. So it's not really need any kind of uh, uh, cake pop sticks behind to poke in the cake because it's not inside the cake, going into the cake. So I just do the, uh, what do you call the, the horns first. So this part is very important, has to be strong. Now, as you see that this, this leg and this leg separate. So I make sure that this part is uh, touching together. And also like, I'm gonna show you something else, which is very important. So this one, that's a touching point around this area. So if I do this like this, and then when I place it on the base, that because the back legs are, are shorter, it will be just uh, leaning in a back, so that's not good. So what I like to do, I'm gonna continue piping here, like that, to bring the base as a level. All right, so that's done. That one doesn't need any stick, all right? So let's do this guy first. When I'm piping, I make sure I'm not scratching the, uh, the, the color at the base, otherwise will be, you see the white spots. Um, and also, as you realize, I'm using the white chocolate. Uh, it's not possible to use dark chocolate because in this printing system, the pretty much like transparency you need 
to see the colors. If you make dark chocolate, it's not possible to see everything. All right. Again. Make it a bit thicker to make it secure. Just to be in the safe side. All right, and then I get this one. And you see that if I put over here, I may have a bit of problem on the neck part. So I'm just gonna put it over here to make it a little bit more secure. All right, good. That will do. All right, that goes also to the fridge. Now let's finish the trees also. I don't want to use these ones. This is completely different look, so I'd like to use only the this the, the realistic ones. Just put it like this. Okay. Some of those trees goes on top of the cake. Uh, some of them goes on the side. So I'm just gonna put some of them with a stick, one of them without the stick. Those sticks we can always chop it off to make it shorter. All right, I think two or three is enough for that. Let's do this one too. All right, that's it. That should be more than enough. That will also go into the fridge. Okay, it was about only five minutes past. So let's see if everything coming up or not. So when we lift up, it should be just come out like this. See, what's happening is the chocolate pick up the print only from the area that when we print what we printed, everything else stay behind. You have to be just a little bit careful, especially that this kind of things that the reindeer has a horn. That's it. Here we go. That side is there. Sometimes there will be some unwanted corner edges. You just have to touch to to make it clean. All right. Background. Come on. That's it. That's beautiful. And the trees. All right. That's it. Now is the time to compose all those things together on the cake. So when you're arranging things on the cake, you make sure that the cake is ready to go. And also all the other items are ready to go. Just touch and place and then just be ready to do this. All right. So now is one problem is when we putting all those sticks behind the objects like this background, uh, the sticks may be longer than the cake because there's a cutboard in between the, the first and the second tier. So I'm going to cut this off slightly down that we don't touch that cutboard. So that is around and this size should be more than enough. All right. Just cutting off. Using, using a sort of like a, what do you call a wire cutter will be good. All right. So what I do, that is the front of the cake. I'm going to put a little bit backwards. So if I put like this and I can see that that's the area, pop it in. So make sure it's like straight, which is, it is correct. So once the, the item touch on the cake, what we do, we weld it. So the touching part has to go a little bit of chocolate here around, all right? And also a little bit this side. So that makes it like really, really secure. So once you do that, so what we can do, we have a rail icing and then just go like a bit wiggly part here like this to cover that area. So you cover the chocolate part, right? Sometimes I use the dark chocolate as a shadow, but in this case, I'm not going to do that. Sort of just like this, a bit of like wiggly bits over here, create a bit of like texture on, on the surface. That will be good enough. So next thing I like to do, the main character is the Elsa, but think about that. I'm going to put the next person behind. So that will be here. All right. That's done. Also check the 90 degrees. Again, a little bit of chocolate here to combine the touching point to the cake. It doesn't fall off later on. Also, I'm going to cover with some snow. So that is already well arranged. 
See, as I uh, put the the background straight, and then the the Elsa is in front, and the second uh, person behind, a little bit sort of like a, uh, off the angle. That will be also quite nice. All right. Next thing, I like to put my reindeer around this edge, but I'm not going to stick on the surface of the kit. I'm going to put a little bit more sort of like a standing in the front. All right. Only what I need is something like that. Something like that. So that means if I have a little bit of chocolate here, and a little bit of chocolate on the bump here, that will be good enough. All right. Chocolate here, chocolate there, and stick. That's it. So it has got to like dimension. I don't to put it on the cake straight. All right. So again, a little bit of snow around. All of comes here. This point, this point is quite good. If I put on top, it will be a little bit of emptiness on the second second tier. So this is already good enough. Uh, that that stick is long enough. I can pocket in like this here. All right. Now, what do we have to do? We have to spread the trees around. All right. So as you see that this cake has front view. When we look at from behind, you can't see much. There's only chocolate. But when you look at from here, from the front, everything is there. All right. So what you can do is you have to put all the trees around. So you can actually print more items to the back here to close that view. For example, if I take this castle, uh, you can make it one more time, two times. You can just put over here, at least what I look at from behind, I see only the big piece of chocolate here. I can close that array with the second print, but the other, way, other way around. So if you reverse the first one, don't reverse the other one, so it can fit together nicely. All right, so let's put two trees around. Again, just chocolate a bit, you don't need so much. When you're putting things around, you make sure that the distance in between di differentiate, like it's not everything is like a, every every tree between 10 centimeters. So it has to go some far away, some close to each other, some even that twice, like double together, very close to each other. That makes it like quite realistic. All right. Okay, now I'm going to clean up a little bit and I'll show you what other objects I can add it on as additional items. All right, since that we don't have much more to pipe or to make it uh, dirty the base, so I can remove my protection line now. So as you remember, I always use a cellophane sheet on the board till the cake is finished. So just remove the sides first, make sure you're not cutting the velvet. Then we cut this one. That's it. So, uh, additional objects, uh, we think about that, the environment, what this environment uh, have other things. I can only see here, it's a snow, ice, and then just ice blocks with a bit of snow on top. So that's why I will, I will use that remaining uh, fondant, which I use for the covered intake. Just a few is enough, this much. So some large pieces, some small pieces, mixture of it. Like that. Just get them roundish first. Maybe a few small pieces. All right. And then give some starch. So it doesn't stick to each other. All right. So once you have this one, take all in the hand and squish it. And when you take it out, look what comes out. Look like stones, isn't it? Look like ice blocks. That's it. All right. Have a bit of icing. I like to put here one. One small piece in front. Okay, maybe one behind, one here, 
one more here in the front. That's it. I'm happy with that. I have here also realizing a little bit sloppy one. Like what I did before, I just add some more water inside and then make the realizing like a flooding, like a flooding consistency. All right. Instead of using the funnel on top, I just put a little bit of this on top. You can also put some, if you want, some more snow effect around here. That is it. We have to know where to stop. That's it. So my snowy cake finished with pop-up concept. Uh, I would like to remind you something. When you look at some of the storybooks, when you open, especially all types, when you open the pages, uh, things are slowly pop up and then becomes like three-dimensional kind of dimensional look. All right. So that is actually the inspiration coming from. I think I would like to recommend you also look at some of those books. It will be very good ideas in there. So um, basically, as I mentioned at the beginning, it is a budget choice. But it is a good choice when the funds are not available, also your time is not available to impress the customer and especially make the kids happy. Uh, that is all from me guys. Thank you so much for watching me and having some time with me today. And uh, God bless you all. Until to my next tutorial, bye for now.